The story of the downfall of Los Chapitos starts with Chicken Little. A 30 years old man from Tijuana that could trick anyone into believe that he's only a young fresa from Tijuana living in Culiacán. But make no mistake, this is a violent man. This is a powerful man with enough firepower to fight against the most trusted man of El Mayo Zambada, the most violent enemy of El Chapo Guzman and the Mexican military. He looks young. That's where his nickname Chicken Little comes from. Uh, he's also known with the name of Nini, which in Spanish translates as ni estudia ni trabaja. He's neither working or in school. And this is because he began with the organization on his early 20s when he was still a kid, but he quickly proved himself of value to a very important faction within the Sinaloa organization. This is a kid that has managed to protect probably the most important faction after El Chapo Guzman. And he also has managed to fight against the Mexican government and not only fight against them, but also flee on uh, using a wide variety of tricks um, and people that works for him and that rely on him in uh, Sinaloa. The first time he proved himself of value for Los Chapitos, especially for Ivan Archivaldo Guzman, who um, back then in 2017, he was already heading the cartel. He was new um, to the leadership of the organization because his dad, El Chapo Guzman, had just been captured a year before. So the uh, word around the Sinaloa organization was still, let's find out who will be the next um, leader of the Sinaloa cartel. Back then was still known as the Federation, right? Most of them were still working together. Most of them were still um, trying to make things work as a whole group, right? El Guano, uh, which is El Chapo's brother, El Mayo, which is one of the co-founders of the Sinaloa cartel. Uh, El Chapo Guzman had already been captured, but he left his um, power or his leadership to Ivan Archivaldo Guzman, and he trusted enough his compadre, um, Los Chapitos' godfather, at least the godfather for Ivan Archivaldo and Jesus Alfredo Guzman Salazar. This man was known as El Lic. His name is Damaso Lopez. And a year before, with El Chapo out of the picture, his three sons, Los Chapitos, traveled to Jalisco, to these fine dining restaurants, state of the art, all white, white floors, white ceilings, white walls, white dishes, uh, even white silverware, everything. The food was white. This is, it, this is an extremely elegant restaurant in Jalisco, very widely known. And as they were having a meeting and they were there with their wives or girlfriends back then, um, they got kidnapped. Somebody managed to get a hold of the three chapitos. And you're watching right now footage from that kidnapping of uh, the three um, chapitos. They immediately knew that this had been a work of Damaso Lopez, El Chapo's um, compadre, the one who actually helped El Chapo escape prison. That's how he became so important in the organization. And that's why El Chapo trusted his kids to him. When he went to jail, El Chapo sent out a message to Damaso, to El Lic, El Licenciado, to take care of uh, three kids, of his three young kids. He literally asked them, hey man, I beg you, please take care of my kids. You are as a brother to me, you are uh, their padrino, right? So he promised and he pledged to take care 
of Los Chapitos. Instead of that, he managed to kidnap the three kids of El Chapo, of his compadre in Jalisco. El Mayo stepped in to negotiate their freedom, to negotiate, to be um, cool with them, to let them go, to not hurt them. But what Damaso wanted, he wanted the leadership of the organization. This is an ambitious man. This is a man with no fear. This is a man who believed that by having all the trust of, of El Chapo Guzman, he was gonna be the next one up when El Chapo uh, was out of the picture, either killed or captured. Um, but instead El Chapo inherited his power, as expected to his oldest, right? To Ivan Archivaldo Guzman. So he got angry, he got mad, he lost it, and he managed to kidnap the three uh, basically his three sobrinos, right? After getting released, Los Chapitos knew that they had to take care of a new enemy. Los Chapitos are kids with a bunch of enemies. Some of them inherited, some of them earned on their own. And one of these enemies was Elik and his son, El Mini Elik. Um, after that, they went into hiding and they started preparing for war. They knew that the change of power, the change of hands for the Sinaloa cartel was not going to be that easy, right? They never thought to fight against El Mayo because um, they knew they were cool and they learned that El Mayo was still on their side and helped them um, get free of the claws of Damaso, right? But um, they weren't safe with Damaso, with El Compadre. They also trusted him and his son, El Mini League. They quickly learned to stop trusting Damaso. So they started preparing for war. And when that was happening, they sent out this letter you're seeing right now to a Mexican journalist to read out on his newscast um, that night in 2017. Um, on, the, on that letter, Los Chapitos accused Damaso, el licenciado, of kidnapping them. And they say they didn't want war. What they did want to uh, let people know is that they didn't want war, but they had to defend themselves against el, el licenciado, right? Damaso Lopez. Damaso then tried to make um, a truce. He wanted to clear his name, so he... Um, tried to make a new gather up, right? He called El Mayo, he called Los Chapitos, he called El Guano to have a meeting uh, on February 2017 in the mountains of Sinaloa, a place where everybody will feel safe, a place where they were not gonna feel any um, sketch, you know, around them that someone was gonna be against them. And El Damaso let them know that, hey, guys, I just want to clear up my name and let you guys know that that was not me. That wasn't me. That was someone else. But let's talk in person and get rid of all these uncomfortable situations. And what ended up happening is that Los Chapitos were there. El Mayo arrived. Uh, Los Chapitos had a different chief of uh, security. Uh, who was El Güero Ranas, a local from Culiacán, also pretty young. And El Güero Ranas also trusted his right hand, who was nonetheless than Chicken Little, El Cero Nueve, or El Nini. And they gather, they arrive there, El Guano arrived with his own security chief, El Mayo arrived with a man called El Pano, which was a former um, elite soldier for a very special unit of the uh, Mexican military and he was there also to protect El Mayo um, and really quick they learned that that was not going to be a meeting that was an ambush by Elik as soon as they arrived and they noticed that Elik was not there in that meeting um, over a hundred men ambushed Los Chapitos um, they heard uh, a couple of them, Jesus Alfredo got uh, hurt, uh, even Arch Archivaldo also got a, a minor injury from the gunshots. But one of the guys that stepped in as a strong man was El Nini. He grabbed his own gun, he managed to quickly put together some of the other sicarios and to order not to step back and not to leave 
up the place until those chapitos were good to go. By then, El Huero Ranas managed to take the chapitos out and to um, get help from locals around the, around the hills. But El Nini stood the fight. He overstayed that fight while El Mayo was gone, El Juana was gone. El Nini stayed there. He stayed uh, fighting for Los Chapitos. And that's how he earned the full trust, not only of Los Chapitos, of El Guero Ranas, and of El Panu, that uh, he saw what happened. He saw this little, this chicken little, you know, like this white, like skinny young guy. He was like in his late 20s, um, grabbing an AK and non-stop fighting and then giving orders on the radio to his other man like let's not stop guys let's go all the way in they kept fighting and he earned los chapitos trust now let me t tell you about who elini is his name in mexico if you hear from him on Mexican official documents, he's called Nestor Isidro Garcia, El Nini, El 19, El 09, or Chicken Little. But if you hear from him in the US or from US documents, as the one that, uh, that, that I've reviewed myself, his name appears as ne Nestor Ernesto Perez Salas. He should be around 31, 32 years old right now. Other versions say that, that he was born in Culiacán or around Culiacán in, in one of the small towns, but I don't think that's the case. Um, coming from um, sources of mine that are really close to him, uh, all of them say that he comes from Tijuana and that he was introduced to Los Chapitos as specifically to Ivan Archivaldo when he was really young in 2010. Um, he was in his early 20s when El Pano made the introductions. He was looking for job and I still have not really learned how he managed to know El Pano, this former Mexican Special Force uh, member that was head of security for El Mayo Zambada. But El Pano made the introductions. El Pano um, got sure that Ivan Archivaldo uh, met uh, El Nini and they immediate, immediately uh, made a, a click. It, it became um, these bromans on the spot, right? They were pretty similar um, for Ivan Archivaldo. El Nini was, you know, like, um, sort of like his youngest uh, half-brother, Ovidio Guzman. He felt that that could be him, but he also learned that he had some value to him. He, the way he spoke, the way he conducted himself. Um, El Nini um, was never that kind of kid that you will see him all, you know, like warlike dressed. He was very properly dressed. Back then when he didn't have enough money, um, he was he, he dressed the best as he could, right? As a border town kid from Tijuana, he was used to dress to dress as the people in California, you know, in San Diego, Los Angeles, with the Apollo polo shirts back then, uh, that kind of clothing. But as uh, he became more important to the organization, <clears throat> and his um, salary started started getting better. He um, proved himself as uh, one with a lot of taste. He drives a red, brand new Lamborghini Urus that it's famous um, all over social because it's very flashy. Come on guys, a red fucking Lamborghini Urus driving around Culiacan with 40 plus uh, pickup trucks behind him. I mean, you have to, to note that, right? He um, dresses Burberry, he loves Fendi, he loves Prada, Louis Vuitton. Uh, he's one of these kids that is always like properly dressed with, you know, the mocassines, very Italian-ish. He's known for being well prepared for the two occasions, right? For when he needs to go with Ivan Archivaldo and Los Chapitos to a high-end dinner, he dresses up like like a proper man, uh, but when he's ready to fight, 
he goes full on camo, um, he looks uh, bellico, right? Like all warlike with helmets. He's uh, over a hundred men that he that he's the leader of. Uh, he wants them all dressed as Mexican Marines. They hold um, best that said Marina of the Mexican Marine, black helmets, you know, like well prepared on the use of arms as well. And he owns different houses around Culiacán, but one of the houses that he likes to, uh, I guess he feels safe there because uh, it's close to his political family, it's close to his uh, wife's uh, family. Uh, it's a small house in the neighborhood of La Hidalgo, that's the colonia's name, La Hidalgo. And it is a plain house, not much luxury. It's very weird to see El Nini on his own house, which is a very nice house with, you know, like very minimalistic um, finishes uh, and a lot of, you know, um, glass and a lot of white, uh, a lot of like spotlights. It's a beautiful home. But he usually goes to this other house to record himself, especially his watches. Whenever he has a chance to show off his watches, he'll just uh, click record and upload those to um, Instagram, TikTok, it's all over the place. But one thing that is important from this house is the tile on the floor. Regular tile, white with a black strip. But the Mexican army, two days after the capture of Ovidio Guzman, they made an operation in La Colonia Hidalgo, in the Hidalgo neighborhood, and they didn't disclose who were they after. But on the photos from the place they raided, you could see this white tile with a black strip that I'm showing you right now on the screen. This is the same place of the last photo of El Nini. They didn't say they were after El Nini, but they were. And this is proof that they were looking for him. Over 20 pickup trucks, no lights, no sirens, super silently started arriving and surrounding the whole colonia, the whole neighborhood. When El Nini learned about that, he was super quick to escape. He left his men to take care of the Urus, to take care of his other Lambo, to take care of the weapons and to, and to start a massive shootout that also lasted for couple of hours at least and while the uh, rain of bullets was going all over the Colonia Hidalgo he escaped riding an old rusty motorcycle wearing a helmet the soldiers saw this guy you know taking off the place on a rundown motorcycle but he managed to escape because the soldiers were not prepared uh, to you know like see this little skinny guy on a motorcycle they thought he was only a puntero right a lookout that was like fleeing from that place and also because his men started making confusion they started saying el 19 on the radios there is the 19th his, his, his code el 19 he's on the other side of the street take care of el 19 the soldiers managed to get to El 19 and kill him. And when they turned him around, he was not El Nini. El Nini managed to escape. El 19 was some, someone else who I guess his man used as a distraction so El Nini could escape. El Nini right now is hiding in the hills of Sinaloa along with Ivan Archivaldo. They're together. They grew up together. So they are protecting each other. They together are even more dangerous and violent than alone. They're setting up something. They're up to something. Um, they want revenge for taking Ovidio because that night, um, El Nini, he never sleeps. He's always, um, you know, on the payroll. He's always up. That night, he was having a small gathering with his girlfriend as any other night, nothing too crazy. And then a few minutes after three in the morning, his radio started going on and the alerts of his man in Jesus Maria, cause he has man in Jesus Maria um, taking care of Ovidio. He has some other man in another uh, small rancho, not far from there, 
taking care of Ivan Archivaldo and Jesus Alfredo. So the radios from Jesus Maria started picking up, saying, we're watching some boludos arrive. And then he immediately said, he was very, he's very calm. This is one thing important of, of El Nini. He's not that crazy. It's uh, very weird, very rare to hear El Nini going off super crazy on the radios. Although he had, he had. I've, I've heard myself those, um, you know, those messages on the, the walkies where he's saying, or threatening people because they fell asleep on the post, you know? It's like, motherfucker, I'm gonna fucking get you and I'm gonna fucking beat your ass. So you better wake up and go. Um, but this time around, he was very calm. He just started saying, everybody who's around, please go to Jesus Maria. This is important for us. Come on, guys, I need you all there in Jesus Maria. He sent some other man to throw papas, grenades, to the airport. He literally said, don't throw grenades or papas um, to the airplanes. Just throw him on the airstrip. Just throw him on the airstrip. And he also said, whoever can, uh, who, 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 whoever is uh, able to leave prison, leave will get you armed and go to Jesus Maria and start fighting those guys. He was very calm. All through that night, he started picking up. His patience started, you know, blowing off when he saw that they already had a video and they, 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 um, the helicopter had already taken off from Culiacan all the way to Mexico City. Um, he sent out a very heartfelt message. He said to his man, guys, we, our lives are made around these men, around Ovidio, around Los Chapitos. And the fact that you let him go, this is no good, guys. Remember that we owe all of our lives, everything we are, we owe to them. So don't let him go like that. Don't let him go like that. A couple of days um, later, um, before he was uh, um, attempted to be captured uh, at his uh, um, house uh, right next to his mother-in-law, he uh, sent out a message thanking everyone for stepping in, thanking his team for fighting, for creating chaos, for have uh, killed some of the Mexican military members. And then he went silent. And then the next day, boom, his house was raided. He's almost um, arrested. And now he knows that this is not going to be an easy transition of power again. And I think he still do some fight against Los Chapitos and he will try to go against them right now where they are demoralized for the arrest of Ovidio, the arrest of El Chapo Guzman and the Mexican government and the US government, both of them have their eyes set on Los Chapitos. They're not caring for El Mayo. They don't give a shit for, you know, El Guano um, or for the other different factions. All they care for is Los Chapitos. Um, another big enemy they made themselves is El Russo, the head of Sicarios for El Mayo Zambada. This is a man who is uh, controlling most of the border towns for El Mayo, but who had pledged to kill El Nini and to go after Los Chapitos, right? Because uh, first of all, because El Russo in 2016 or around those years, he um, kidnapped a couple or a group of local police officers in Culiacán, beat them up almost to death. And Los Chapitos didn't like because those guys were on the payroll of Los Chapitos. They communicated to El Mayo Zambada his, uh, their distrust for El Russo and asked respectfully El Mayo to turn El Russo over to them so he can pay for what he did. But instead, El Mayo just um, asked El Russo to leave Culiacán. He asked him to go to uh, Tijuana, San Luis Rio Colorado, or Mexicali, right? You choose, but get out of Culiacán because uh, they're after you. And that made a bit of, uh, you know, like a crack between El Mayo and Los Chapitos. There is no beef between them. 
uh, between his people there is, but not between them. El Mayo is a very intelligent man, and Los Chapitos are still sort of loyal because he was the one who interceded to set them free from, from, from El Mini League, right? So, uh, I mean, they, they are not completely fighting El Mayo, but there is a gap to be filled. And the strongest faction is for sure that of El Mayo Zambadas. They also have managed to um, get the enemies with the Caro Quintero organization. Although Rafael Caro Quintero was not really taking any part of the operations and the leadership of the Caro Quintero's faction for the Sinaloa cartel, his, uh, his brother, El Pelochino, uh, he, he is. Uh, he is one of the most ruthless factions also for the Sinaloa cartel and he's having probably the most violent war between the men's of Los Chapitos and another faction of the Sinaloa cartel in Sonora. On the first 40 days, they managed to kill over 200 men in, in Sonora alone. So they are pretty violent. That fight is getting, um, you know, to its worst. And they're gonna try also to cash in that arrest of Ovidio and that Los Chapitos are now scared and are now, you know, like confused and trying to, to get more people um, to work with them, to work their alliances, to, you know, reduce their chances of getting killed or captured. But the reality, guys, is that this is the end for Los Chapitos. And this is not coming from, you know, a speculation. This is coming from seeing what has been happening through the years with them, how they've been more and more and more on the mouth of Mexican and US politicians, but also how they've earned more and more enemies and how many of their own people are turning their backs to Los Chapitos as well. So uh, I think this will be the beginning of the end for Los Chapitos faction. And we will start uh, hearing more about the um, operations to capture first El Nini and then Ivan Archivaldo Guzman. And then there's gonna be a huge gap on that organization. And I think this is also going to be called the end of the brand of the Sinaloa cartel. Guys, um, this is it for this debrief today. Um, I'm going to ask you again for a favor. Please subscribe to this channel. I know you're watching and you're not subscribed, but just hit the subscribe button. Share these uh, on Instagram, on WhatsApp, on Facebook. Uh, on um, you know text message to someone you think it's gonna find some value to to this episode and i'm gonna keep bringing you more on february also the next debrief it's gonna be live i want to hear from you after i went in and out of jesus maria i've been getting a lot of comments a lot of questions a lot of hate a lot of love as well and I'm gonna be there to answer all of your questions, all of your hate messages, all of your love messages. Um, and if you go and, and, and hit the um, super like uh, button, $5 right on the live, I'm gonna answer your question as I get the, um, the super like notification. So that's it for now, guys. I'll see you on the next brief live.